Yellowstone volcano, magma flows and powerful earthquakes gave ample warning of eruption. The Yellowstone volcano has erupted three times in its lifetime and on each occasion, humans were fortunately not around to witness the eruption. Yellowstone's last eruption, the so-called Lava Creek event was hundreds of thousands of years before the first human civilizations emerged. However, geologists studying the Yellowstone supervolcano now have a pretty good idea of how the volcano behaved before each of its three super eruptions. The U.S. Geological Survey USGS, has now revealed how Yellowstone will give off plenty of warning signs if it decides to erupt for a fourth time. According to geologist Christy Till of Arizona State University, a future Yellowstone eruption will be preceded by earthquakes, ground deformation and massive magma movements. When Yellowstone last erupted, magma from beneath the volcano moved into Yellowstone's magma chamber. Dr. Till said, So if Yellowstone were to erupt again, which is unlikely to happen, remember, it is possible that the eruption would be caused by the same movement of magma from deep within the Earth's crust into a shallower magma chamber. This is something that is easy to detect, because such a magma movement would cause massive earthquakes, much different and more violent than we usually see, significant ground deformation, much greater than the few inches per year of uplift or subsidence that are common, and potentially even changes in gas or thermal emissions. These parameters are well monitored, so there would be ample warning of a potential of future eruption. Sufficient warning would likely be decades in the making, as evidence of previous eruptions suggests. The good news is that there is no guarantee that the supervolcano will erupt again. But knowing the warning signs in advance could prevent a deadly disaster one day. Because of this near-regular interval between eruptions, some believe that Yellowstone is due for another major eruption. But according to the USGS and Dr. Till, volcanoes never follow a timetable, meaning Yellowstone is not overdue. The USGS said, the three eruptions occurred 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and 0.64 million years ago. The two intervals are 0.8 and 0.66 million years, respectively, which averages out to an interval of 0.73 million years. Again, the last eruption occurred 0.64 million years ago, which means we are still about 90,000 years away from when we consider Yellowstone to be overdue for another caldera forming eruption. However, the USGS said it would be unwise to rule out the possibility of another catastrophic eruption in the future. The most likely scenario, the agency said, is a large hydrothermal eruption of hot water and steam from Yellowstone's many water features. Researchers at Washington State University and the University of Idaho have found a new way to estimate how quickly magma is recharging beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano. Unfortunately, the findings won't help volcanologists predict an eruption in Yellowstone, which some say is already overdue. But the results will help better understand how the basaltic magma pool recharges the volcano. Peter Larson, from Washington State University's School of the Environment, likened the recharging process to burning fuel under pressure in a boiler. The Yellowstone expert said, the coal in the furnace is what heats everything up. The coal heats the boiler. The boiler is what explodes. This tells us what heats the boiler. Dr. Larson and his colleagues observed a plume of basaltic magma, molten rock rich in iron and magnesium heating up silica-rich rhyolite. Volcanic rhyolite is a rock that typically erupts to the surface during volcanic eruptions. 
Dr. Larson said, this gives us an idea of how much magma is recharging the volcano each year. The surprising discovery is published in the latest issue of the science journal Geosphere. In the study, researchers injected a number of hot springs in Yellowstone with deuterium, an isotope of hydrogen, to measure the amount of water and heat leaking from the springs. The researchers write, heat flow data, when combined with estimates of conductive heat loss around the springs, suggest that current estimates of heat release at Yellowstone may underestimate heat loss from the caldera and provide insight into the rate of magma supply from the mantle. The researchers conclude that previous studies underestimated the amount of water circulating through the springs as well as the amount of heat leaking from them.